guys. I've got a couple of different models of wine fridge here. These are both made by New Air, but they're really pretty different fridges and they're both sort of meant for different applications. So I'm gonna kind of talk about in this episode, um, when you're looking into buying a wine fridge, what types of things you might wanna look for and sort of steer you into one fridge versus another fridge um, and just make sure that it really fits your application right. And also I'm gonna talk about the importance of temperature and wine. So one thing that kind of drives me nuts as a wine maker is you'll give somebody a bottle of wine and they'll go home and they'll drink it, but they'll, they won't really think about what maybe the proper temperature is for that wine. And temperature can make a huge impact on the actual taste of the wine. Uh, there's sort of some ranges of categories of wine and each within each one of those categories there's sort of a sweet spot for temperature. So if we're talking about champagne or we're talking about sweet wines, whether they be white or pink or whatever, those are generally the wines that you're going to want to chill. So you're going to chill those anywhere from 42 to 46 degrees and they're really meant to be drank at those temperatures. If you don't chill those wines, that are sweet, they're gonna end up tasting almost syrup, syrupy and people are gonna say, oh, this wine's a little bit too sweet for me. Well, maybe the wine's just not at the right temperature. Then you kind of have your sort of lighter bodied um, red wines. So these will be like your um, Cabernet Franc, um, Pinot Noir, the ones that are pretty approachable, not a lot of tannin, um, oftentimes not in the higher, higher alcohol ranges. So maybe the 12.5 to 13.5 alcohol ranges. And these ones are gonna be closer to your serving temperatures of like 58 degrees to low 60s. And then of course you've got your big bold red wines like your Petit Syrahs or your Cabernet Sauvignons. And these wines are, are more meant for the high 60s. So like you see, I've got my fridges set here at 66 degrees. Um, so if you were to open a bottle of wine at 66 degrees and pour it in a glass and let it sit in the air out for a little bit, it'll be like 67, 68 by the time you drink it and that's just right where you want it to be for those wines. If you were to drink a big, you know, 14 and a half percent alcohol, um, high tannin California red at say 55 degrees, it's just gonna rip your it's just going to blow your palate out with the amount of tannin that you're going to get. You're not even going to be able to taste the other tastes in that wine. So, you know, people are going to drink it and say, wow, this is, this wine is just too intense. It's not right. Again, it's just a temperature problem with that wine. So kind of brings me to something that's really important if you're choosing a wine fridge and that's the, just having multiple zones. So you can kind of have your sweet wine, white wine, champagne, sparkling wine, um, in your cold zone and then you can basically have a zone for your red wines and even in some fridges you might even have a third zone so you could kind of have your light reds versus your heavy red zones and generally I would call this like short-term wine storage so as a winemaker you have a lot of wine laying around so you basically have long-term wine storage which is your racks and racks and racks that you might have in your basement but if you have friends over you don't want to pull a wine out of the basement and then have to try to manipulate the temperature um, to get it into that sweet spot so that's why i have wine fridges um, and r really one wine fridge should do you good um, this one here holds 20 not 21 bottles this one holds 29 bottles um, that's more than enough bottles, I would think, unless you're having a huge party. Uh, but that would kind of get you started. But like I mentioned, I was going to talk about these are two very similar looking, but r really somewhat different fridges. So this is a more of a premium high end fridge. So this is the New Air AWR 290 DBB. So that's a tough one to roll off the tongue. And then this is the um, AWR. 211 ED, so 21 bottles, 29 bottles. But the real big difference between these two is this is a thermoelectric wine fridge, and this is a standard um, compressor style wine fridge, just like your fridge in your kitchen would have. And um, there's reasons why you would want to choose one of these versus the other. Uh, so the compressor is a lot more powerful. So 
this will chill right down like really quick. This fridge will be down to temperature in a couple minutes. This one might be take two or three times as long to get down to temperature. It's actually cooling down right now. Um, but the advantage of, so the advantage here is it's fast. So if you have, you know, a restaurant or something, you're opening and closing all the time, this will have no trouble keeping up. If you live in Phoenix, Arizona, and your house is hot as heck, again, no trouble keeping up. Um, but the disadvantage is the compressor does kick on and off just like a fridge. So you kind of hear it kick on, you know, every 10 minutes or so and kick off. You wouldn't really notice it if it's in a, in a kitchen, but like if you're going to put this thing in your bedroom or something, uh, you would definitely want to target the thermoelectric model for that type of application. This one's actually pretty power friendly. Um, it's only 90 watts, where the thermoelectric version's um, 140 watts. Uh, the thermoelectric fridges use what's called a Peltier cooler. So here's a little one. It's basically a chip um, that you apply a curtain, current to it, and one side gets really hot and the other side gets really cold. So they put a large heat sink on it, run fans across it, and it'll chill the inside and create a little bit of heat on the back side. So it's a pretty cool little thing, and it's great for if you have a small apartment or like a studio apartment, or just a, you want to put a wine fridge like in a living area. Um, these thermoelectric fridges are great for that. The one sort of disadvantage of the thermoelectric versus the um, compressor is this one's vented on the back. So I probably wouldn't mount this into your kitchen um, countertop. I would, I'd say this one kind of just needs some airflow back here. It's got fans in the back, and it really just needs flow to cool those um, Peltier heaters or uh, coolers. Where this one here is actually sort of intended to go um, in your kitchen to be built in. So if you're doing kitchen remodel or something, this one's standard cabinet height. Um, it's got venting in the front versus the back, so it has some airflow going through here. So you don't have to really leave much space in the back or anything like that. Um, like I said, it's got a lot of power, and generally compressors are pretty reliable. Um, Peltier heaters or coolers are also pretty reliable, but I mean, a compressor, these, these things have been around forever. So I don't know if you can hear that. This actually just kicked on. If you can't hear it, they said it's not loud. Like, it's not anything to worry about, but if you're going to have it like in a bedroom, it could be a problem. Um, let me open this thing up and kind of just go through some things. So on like the premium model fridges, the lighting on these is pretty soft and nice actually. It's not very directed. You can turn the lights off, you can turn them on. I, I like to turn them on if there's people over, but in reality I don't usually leave them on. Um, this has sort of like a smoother touch pad versus actual sticking out buttons. And actually all these, um, these new air fridges have these nice wooden racks versus like I had an older wine fridge that had these sort of metal racks. You see those on a lot of the cheaper fridges. Um, this one for a 29 bottle fridge is actually pretty small, but that sort of comes with its own disadvantage. So. To fit 29 bottles in here basically means you have to alternate them and on the bottom you actually stack them. And it's nice because you can fit 29 bottles, but ideally you wouldn't want to always load this thing at max capacity. Uh, a feature that you definitely want to make sure your wine fridge has is just a double paned glass front just to hold the cold in. And then a feature that this one has that I don't really need, but if you had kids or something you might want, is this one's actually lockable. So something to consider uh, if you want to make sure nobody gets into your wine. Now this one here is the um, more inexpensive model, and this is the thermoelectric model. And if you look at the differences between the two, like from the outside, the fit and finish is actually very similar on these two. They both look really high quality. This is like a black stainless steel, whereas this is more of a traditional stainless steel. But when you get into this one, it has buttons versus the smooth 
um, touchpad, but otherwise it really does still look like nice build quality. The wooden shelves, they slide in and out like this. And this one fits 21. This one fits on really nice and easy. You don't have to do any reorienting or anything like that. So I actually really, really like this fridge for the price. And if I was gonna have one, I mean, again, it's just hard to tell. It just depends on your application. If I was gonna build a new kitchen, I would buy the compressor style fridge and mount it into my um, actual kitchen permanently. Whereas um, just living in an apartment or something like that, I would definitely go for the thermoelectric style fridge. Um, that's really all there is to selecting a wine fridge, but don't just go to the Lowe's or anything and just grab whatever you see because you might not end up happy with it depending on you know what you want. Make sure you get the right wine fridge for your application. If you have any questions about this stuff, feel free to post them in the comments. And also uh, make sure to click the little subscribe button for any more winemaking videos and click the little bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.